Greetings, Internet. Welcome back to the shop. So today I'm going to mill up a whole bunch of pens and you're going to get a fun little montage thing. I'm making modified slimline pens today. And yeah, so let's get started. So a guy who is currently working for my parents uh, named Tim is also a woodworker and is also very awesome. And he brought me a whole slew of blanks to play with. So we have Purple Heart, Paduke, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this thing, but my dad has worked with this and I've actually played a little bit with it before. I made a wand out of this and it is really hard wood. So we'll see how it turns for a pen. Uh, Kingwood, which I've never played with, and I think this is either a maple or a beech. Uh, the request I had from Rebecca, who I'm making these pens for, was to have things that had interesting grain in them, and I think these all qualify. And then on top of those guys, I have this guy right here. Uh, this is for the official scorekeeper, otherwise known as my brother, uh, so that he can keep hockey scores for some family members. So let's get started. So I apologize if things are a little shaky. I'm filming this all on my phone because once again, the charger for my camera has vanished. Anyway, this is how you lay these out. Uh, you take both your pen tubes and put them side by side and then we're gonna mark them. So we're gonna put a little mark right there. And then I'll expand that mark. And that's how long you wanna cut your blank to. When we glue these up, we're only actually going to use one tube and actually glue one tube in and then leave the other one out. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But for now, let's get these all sized and cut and then we'll drill some holes. So I've got everything cut to length. I was going to do it on the bandsaw, but the bandsaw was having a bad day. So I ended up doing it on the chop saw, which is fine. Didn't throw anything across the room. And now I'm going to put everything into my uh, handy dandy little vise here. And the bit I have in my drill is a 7 millimeter bit. And it is long enough to go the whole way through the blank. Uh, especially with slimline pen, the modified slimlines. You want your hole to go the whole way through and you want it to be even. Because otherwise the pen kit won't line up. And it's a pain in the butt. So... Definitely go ahead and get yourself a longer drill bit. All right, I'm going to drill these out, and then we'll go back to the table. Okay, so we're all drilled up. Let's see, hold the whole way through, and all of them. So I pulled six pen tubes, and remember, we're only putting one pen tube in these because of the way the mechanism has to go in. So I'm going to take this piece of 80 grit, grit sandpaper and rough up these pen tubes so that the glue has something to stick to, and then I'll be back in a sec. Alrighty, so I put gloves on, I've got a mask on. This stuff is called Hot Stuff, and it is instant glue, and it is made for just about everything, including gluing your fingers together. So, definitely wear some gloves, and this stuff absolutely stinks. Um, I like to kind of put my guys up on, the, up on their ends, so I can see where I'm going. Because this stuff dries really, really fast. Okie dokie, here we go. I'm gonna just slather this on here. I get a little bit on my gloves, it's okay. I definitely don't want to get a lot on my gloves. And then push it until that is flush. And then set it down and move on to the next one. Okay, so glue is dry. It doesn't take long to dry, but I always kind of let it dry for like an extra 15 minutes or so. Here is my bench, which is a freaking mess because I've been turning pens all day. And here is my blank. This is the end that has the permanent tube in it, and this end does not. So, in this end, we're going to put another pen tube. This pen tube is slick, it has not been roughed up at all, and that's going to be important later. But for it to turn nicely on the lathe, it's better to put the pen tube in it. So I always put mine, just so I can keep track of it, 
with the loose pen tube towards that end of the mandrel. And then a second bushing, a washer, and the screw nut to hold it down tight. Cool. So, pull this close. I'm going to turn this down, and I'll see you in a bit. Well, it was going so well, and then this happened. So, here we are. Uh, this is the king's wood that blew out, so I'm going to see if I have another king's wood blank, and I'll deal with that later. On to turning the rest of them, and then I'll come back to this guy. Okay. So, here they all are. These are just turned. They haven't been sanded yet or anything, but I wanted to put them on my handy-dandy little rack that I made. There's the busted one. Uh, and then, of course, you get a sneak peek. You may have seen these on my Instagram. Uh, these are the three that I sanded this morning and painted, and they are ready to be finished, which I may do today. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if I get to sanding these today or if that has to be a tomorrow project. Uh, the black and white and red one definitely gave me a little bit of a challenge there. Uh, even though my tools are sharp, it was very hard to cut. So yeah, I'm going to continue on here and go until I can go no more, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, welcome back to the shop. It is Friday, of Black Friday, in fact. It's been a little while since I've been able to get back out here, so these pens are still sitting here very nicely on their little pen rack. So my goal today is to get these two completely assembled, which means they need to be covered with the CA finish and then assembled. And then to get these guys all sanded, and if I get there, to also get them finished. So we'll see how we're doing. Uh, the clock says about that time, and the clock is actually wrong by an hour because of daylight savings. So it is 9.47, not 10.47. So we'll go and see how we do here. See you in a bit. Okay, it's time for a sanding party. Because I'm sanding wood, with the exception of the black and white resin one, uh, I'm going to start here. So, 120, 150, 180, 220, 280, 320, and 400. And then I have a whole different set of things to seal them with. So, I'm going to save you the sanding montage and come back on the other side. Okay, so here we are all sanded. The next thing to do is to finish these pens. So I'm gonna trade up what's on my lathe and excellent news, I have found the power cord to my video camera so I can stop recording this on my phone and maybe have a still shot. So I will get that all set up and then after lunch, we will put some finish on these pens. <music> Okay, so to finish your pens, you're going to want a couple of things. You're going to want latex gloves, you're going to want a mask. Make sure whatever mask you're using is definitely rated for fumes. It is still CA glue. Uh, this one happens to come from RZ Mask and it has their... You also want some sort of CA finisher. Uh, this one happens to be stick fast. This is their thin stuff. Uh, really, I should use the medium stuff, but... I don't have any, so thin stuff it is. You will also want an activator. This makes the CA glue dry instantly. This is the real reason you want the mask. And then for these pens, since they are wood, Stickfast makes a polishing set that looks like this. There's one that has a green label that says gloss, or that says satin, and then the one with the purple label says gloss. This means that I only have to sand these pens to 400 instead of having to sand them through micro mesh, which is great. So, let's get rolling here. I will mask up and put gloves on and do a thing. 
because the last thing I turned on this lace was to Duke, there is orange dust everywhere. It looks like I ate eight bags of Cheetos. Okay, so you're going to want your lathe to spin at not a lot of revolutions. So I normally run this at about 420 and that's normally enough. So, you want a rag, or a shop towel, or whatever, you're going to take your CA glue, and you're going to run it down the length, and then you're going to quick do that, back and forth once, and then move your fingers so that the CA glue does not eat through your gloves or your shop towel. Now, the thing that I have learned with this, and maybe this doesn't work for anybody else, but it definitely works for me, is to stop the lathe grab the activator, do it once, spin the lathe twice, and let it dry. It shouldn't take terribly long, maybe a couple of seconds. And that's the reason that this hand doesn't have any glove on it, is so that I can go like this and see if it's still sticky, which it is just a little bit, so let it dry for just a little longer. That's going to be really pretty. This particular, I do actually think it's maple, had a, had a knot on one end. So the writing tip end of the pen is darker than the other, and it's very pretty. Alright, one more checky here, and we're all dry. Sweet. Turn the lathe back on, and do number two. Now the whole reason for not spinning the lathe with the activator is I have found that I get stripes on my pen if I keep the lathe spinning. So that's why I'm stopping it and doing it by hand. The goal of course is to make sure that you don't get any shop towel in your finish. Always give your pen a spin and make sure you don't have any extra white flecks in there. Alright, now for the next one. And you're going to do this about five times. I haven't really come up with a reason for to do more than that. When I was doing this just with the CA and I didn't have the activator, I did about ten layers. And you, if you want to do like a micro mesh sanding when you're done, then yeah, do ten layers so you have ten layers of CA to play with before you hit the wood. But because of the finishing polish that I have, I don't need to do that, which is great. Because it's one less sanding step, which is always a great thing to have. All right, spin this once, make sure we're all dry here. That's looking very pretty. All right, two more. move my hand I could feel the glue see it gets hot so I could feel it through my gloves it didn't burn through my gloves uh, yesterday I did have a different pair of gloves on and I had the CA burn and actually fume through my gloves and even with a mask on it hurt my lungs so definitely wear a mask definitely wear gloves if you can wear latex gloves thick latex gloves these are meant for plumbers wear thick latex gloves Definitely do not skimp on the protection of your hands and the protection of your lungs in this particular case. Oh, you can't see it in this shot, but down here I have a plastic bag on my lathe bench. Make sure you cover your lathe. This stuff is not great for metal. Um, and it will be a pain in the neck to get off. So, alright, now put your caps on your CA glue and your activator because you're done with those. Alright, as soon as this is dry, which I think it is the color round. Sweet. Okay, now we're going to take first the one that says satin, that's the one with the green label, and we're going to put a little itty bitty dab on our cloth here. It doesn't have to be a lot. Really, you're just coating the pen with it.
and then I'm going to turn my glaze back on and I'm going to take it up to a speed at which I would normally sand or polish with. So in my case I normally do that at about 620, 600, somewhere in there. Now I'm going to use my free hand and we're going to put this all over this pen, up and down. And then find a clean spot on the cloth and just buff it. Alright. And then I like to stop my lid and make sure that I didn't put any stripes in it. Oh, cool. That one's done. Now, for the gloss one. Same thing. you hear things that sound like doors moving, it is the drop cloths that are that way to the rest of the shop that doesn't have any heat and they are moving because of the pressure. Alright, same idea with this one. Up and down one time, gloss are on up, and then buff. And it just saves so many steps and a huge thank you to Tim Davis who turned me on to this. I absolutely adore this. It makes my life so much easier and it's a whole lot less steps to get a gorgeous looking pen. Excellent. So, this pen is done. It can be assembled. I'm going to go and do this same process to the rest of the pens and then we'll put them all together. Okay, so now that all of these have been finished, I can put pen kits together. So all of these are going to get a gold clip. <laughs> Noisy is helpfully checking out the table. They have a pen insert. I believe these are all blue. A thing that the pen turns in. A thing for the cap. And a thing for the nib. They also all have one of these, so if you're turning a regular slimline pen, this would go in the middle, but I'm not turning a regular slimline pen, so we don't need that. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is take the tube that isn't secure out of the ends of the pen. Uh, specialty equipment. It's just a paintbrush, but the end happens to be just the right size to kind of go in here, turn, and hopefully not break it, and pull the pen tube out of the inside. Cool. Step two, put this back down. So you know which end is which. Okay, now, take your pen tube. First thing that goes in is the nib. So, kind of get it started in the tube. And then I like to do it nib end on something that's hard but not the bench. Take a mallet. And go the whole way down. So it looks like that. Alright, next thing is this is called a transmission. Kind of like the same thing in your car. So you can see there are little striations in it. Depending on the length of this guy depends on how far you want to sink your transmission. So I'm going to push it as far as it'll go with my own brute strength. And then I'm going to take this pen kit, screw it in here, and turn the transmission. You'll see that nothing came out of the nib, which means it's not in far enough. So take that out. I don't think I can push this any further. Nope. So now I'm going to put it nib side down, back on the bench, and hit it with a hammer, and sink it a little further. Okay, so now I'm Kind of two ribs in, there's a little bit of brass left. I'll try it again. Stick this in. Turn it. Turn the transmission. You see that I'm still not coming out the end there. That means I need to sink it some more. Okay, now I have sunk all the brass in. Try this again. Push that. You'll see that it's just starting to come out the end. If I sink this to this line, 
we should be okay. also use other things. You can use a vise to do this. You can use a... there's a thing called a pen vise. Okay. So this is good. Pen sticking out the hole in the end. Has a little knobby thing. Awesome. Turn the transmission back. It recedes the hole in. Great. Okay. Put this aside for a second. We'll go back to our main pen body. This is the pen tube that is... this is the end with the pen tube that is glued in. You see it's a little rough, it's got some glue on the edges. So I'm just going to take a knife. And very carefully clean up that edge. Now, goes in here is your clip and the cap. So put those two things together. Put them on here. Kind of, sort of. I might be able to sink this one the whole way. Now, because the ends are very thin and very fragile, I want to be really careful about hitting with this for the hammer. If I don't have to, if I can put it in by hand, which is what I'm kind of doing right now. I'm just forcing it in. I may need to give this one little smack. And if I can just push it on the table, I might not even have to do that. Okay, so I'm going to give this just a little hit to sink it. And there's that. Okay, so now we have this piece and this piece, and now it's time to connect them. So, really, they just slide one inside each other. Ta-da! And then you turn this, and the pen nib comes out. Now, with these pens, because these are modified slim lines, they don't have a center section to get at the pen kit inside, the best way to do that is to actually make your pen come the whole way out and just keep twisting so the whole thing comes out. And these you can get uh, just about anywhere that you can buy a cross pen. So yeah, that's how to make a slim line. These are really cool pens, they turn out really nice. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to do this to all the rest of these, and Rebecca, your pens will be up probably before this video is, and the rest of the pens will be up for sale on my Etsy site, that is www.etsy.com slash shop slash from makers hands. Hope you all have a great day, and we'll talk to you and see you soon. Excuse me. Well, yes, hi. Trying to do things. I know. Hi. I'm gonna be recorded. Say recorded chin scratching. <laughs>